This is James Laxer. He is a famous Canadian political scientist. He is also a known anti-communist and a member of the New Left. He spoke to TV Ontario about the dangers of utopianism and specifically about the Marxist conception of the new man. One of the things that my father tried to teach me as a child was that we were in the early days of the human race. So we were living in the infancy of the human race and that what we were through Marxism-Leninism and through the Communist Party and through the revolution that was to come, we were going to build not only a new society, but we're going to create a new man. This is going to be a new towering figure that was going to be, uh, would tower above the kind of pygmy figures that we were, this, these kinds of small, uh, incomplete beings in the early stages of human existence. This, as time went by, I found more and more frightening and horrifying. The problem not only with the new man is that it's a Frankenstein's monster, but also that it opens the door to people to say, anything that must be done to achieve this end um, is morally and ethically correct. That to me is, this, is the monstrous center of this whole vision and to me I have been left with a profound horror for utopianism. The idea of remaking the world and remaking humanity. Anybody who says that is going to have trouble talking to me because I then fear um, where that leads. Yes, the age-old boogeyman of social engineering. The idea that the commies are coming to brainwash us at any moment. Long story short, us as Marxists want to create better people by creating better material conditions in which people exist, which in their eyes is an evil Orwellian scheme to program everybody to obey. Of course, this opinion is pretty far from the truth and it is immensely hypocritical. What we have is a dialectical materialist understanding of world events and the social forces that take place in them, as well as history. This means we try to understand why and how things happen and use this as a tool to create a better world. Or, as it was put by Mao Zedong, changes in a society are due chiefly to the development of internal contradictions in society. That is, the contradiction between the productive forces and the relations of production, the contradiction between classes and the contradiction between the old and the new. It is the development of these contradictions that pushes society forward and gives the impetus for the supersession of the old society by the new. Meanwhile, capitalism does the exact same thing, except it's done for profit making and done to convince the public into supporting things that are against their interests and an unending number of wars. How do you ask? Frankly, the idea that any society doesn't socially engineer is absolutely ridiculous. All societies are based on a structure. That structure perpetuates ideas, morals, and values that reinforce that structure. Capitalism is absolutely no different in this regard. When we go to school, are we told that capitalism is bad and that we must challenge its power at every turn? No. We are told that greed and selfishness are a good thing and that this combined with the magical hidden hand of the market will create the best possible world for us. This is why people like the Koch brothers fund things like the Tea Party that are rabidly anti-communist, even though they have no idea what communism is. There is a reason why Atlas Shrugged is read in schools, and Marx is not. Advertising companies keep psychologists on payroll in order to better program the minds of people who view their ads to want to buy the products that they're selling. However, this is not considered to be Orwellian in the eyes of Laxer. Really, this is just the very old, the road to hell is paved with good intentions line, so that therefore their bad intentions must therefore be good, because bad is good, good is bad, up is down, left is right, and thus it is a justification for greed and selfishness, because this will create the best of all possible worlds, despite how awful greed is shown to be in reality. 
His whole bit there on morals is actually quite bad. What he's saying is that communists will do anything to achieve the end goal. The end goal is moral, therefore anything that's done to get there is therefore justifiable. Of course, this is not what we actually think. In reality, we see a process that has contradictions in it, and is resolving these contradictions is how we get to that place. But he reduces it to, or makes it out to be, just simply doing whatever we want to get the job done. And that's not true. It's actually kind of funny listening to him make that statement, given that that's the entire premise of capitalism. Greed and selfishness are bad things, but they are justifiable because they give us the best of all possible worlds in the end, regardless of the fact that it doesn't actually accomplish that and consigns about a billion people to hunger every year. What he's really doing here with morals is indirectly claiming that the morals of capitalism are objectively correct because the ones of communism must be wrong. Of course, in truth, all morals are completely subjective. What he's doing is creating an objective truth that capitalism is morally right on a subjective foundation of their morals somehow being correct. It's basically a very sneaky way of trying to say that ca uh, communism is morally wrong and capitalism is morally right, even though they do represent complete polar opposites in that situation. Communism is trying to be altruistic and capitalism is not. He's trying to claim that objectively capitalism is moral when that's completely based on a subjective foundation. But why let something like philosophy get in the way of your capitalist propaganda? The final act of dishonesty here, or maybe his total ignorance, is the idea that we as Marxists want to create a utopian society, or that we feel that we can, or that's even our goal. Well, this is not true. This is not a claim that we've ever made. This only speaks to his own blithering ignorance of Marxist theory. This also speaks to his blatant ignorance surrounding the social manipulation of capitalism. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share on various social media. And if you want, there's some other good videos here you can check out.